first uh, let me just uh, draw the piezoelectric effect for the energy harvesters across the electrical load okay and then uh, we'll be seeing for no mechanical load okay then compressive load leading to the decrease in the polarization relative to the no load condition and third we'll draw a condition where the tensile load leading to an increase in the polarization relative to the no load condition so first let me draw the no load condition let me draw no load condition so let's say uh, it will be like uh, if i just draw it like this okay so suppose i have uh, for the sake of clarity i am just drawing one dipole so suppose i have one dipole like this This dipole is like this this dipole is like this and let me put another dipole which is there okay so let's say this is the positive end this is the negative end positive end negative end positive end negative end positive end negative end so it has a net polarization which is let's say now in this direction which is Yes, continuous polarization which is in this direction. Let's say this is the surface of the material. In here also, let me just draw the surface. Okay. So it is, if it is ne negative charge, so there will be a positive bound charges. Here will be a positive bound charges. Here will be a positive bound charges. Here will be a positive bound charges. In a similar way, here will be a negative bound charges. Here will be a negative bound charges. Here will be another negative bound charges. Here will be another negative bound charges. Okay. Now suppose if If you are, have no mechanical load, if suppose you have not applied, and the, how the circuit will look like? Uh, so suppose uh, this will be connected to an external circuit, and here I have a load resistance like this. Okay. So first condition, let me say that uh, I am not applying any mechanical load. So this is let me say first condition where no mechanical load is applied no mechanical load so you it means you are not applying this force per so stress is zero and this is what this is your load resistance which you have applied in the external circuit as rl so what will happen the current through the rl is now zero okay now if you have a mechanical load which you are applying let's say so if you are compressing it so suppose if you are compressing it so if you compress it so what will happen so maybe that uh, okay let me just draw it let me just draw it so what will happen this dipoles will be like this okay it will be like this it will also be like this let's say this will also be like this so what will happen the the this is positive let's say positive negative positive negative positive negative part now if you are applying a load mechanical load in this direction you are applying a mechanical load in this direction so now this what will happen in these two surfaces
this polarization value of the polarization will be reduced so ps value will be reduced because you can see that polarization is getting reduced so what will happen if polarization is reduced so it means uh, the negative charges or the electrons it has to be compensated right so it will be compensated and you have the external circuit where you have these two ends are connected these two ends are connected through the load resistance rl so what will happen there will be a flow of the current now because of the uh, because now what will happen this polarization will be reduced and so it means that the number of electrons here in this surface will be reduced so what will happen electron will be moving in this way electron will move in this way so if electron will move in this way there will be a current non-zero current a non-zero current which will be moving in this direction so this will be the direction of current okay third case if you now you are applying a compressive stress now if you are applying a tensional stress so uh, compression and then uh, extension basically if you do the extension then what will happen the opposite thing will happen here there will be the opposite thing so it will now expand and uh, because of the expansion what will happen this will be more aligned this dipole will be more aligned so it means now the charge more electrons will be accumulated here so if you just think about the external circuit now what will happen electron will come to this electron will come to this electron will come to this because number of electrons will be increased here and uh, the value of magnitude of the ps it will increase from the earlier case so across the load resistance there will be a current flow which will be in this direction and that will also be non-zero non-zero current will flow in this direction so you can see if you are applying a tensional stress in this case now if you are applying in this case tensional stress in this case okay so whether you are compressing it or if you are uh, expanding it both cases there will be a flow of current uh, but the direction of the current will be different in this case it will be in this direction and in this case it will be in this direction okay so it means you are you will be getting a ac electric uh, ac uh, current right you are getting ac current or if you just measure the voltage across this load resistance if you measure the voltage across this load resistance you will be getting ac voltage You'll be getting a volt ac voltage or you are uh, depending on what is the rl value you can actually measure the open circuit voltage and short circuit current so here you can measure the open circuit voltage or the short circuit current okay short circuit circuit that is what you can measure okay okay so now if i consider that uh, the charge q which is generated across the so let me consider that the charge q is the charge which is generated across the surface and uh, let me take the area of the surface is a and the mechanical stress which is applied uh, let me take that as sigma delta sigma this is the stress okay this is the area and this is the charge which are charges which are generated at the surface of this so in this case with this i can write down this equation that q equals to d33 into area 
into sigma so charge is proportional to area into this this where this is called the piezoelectric coefficient where this is called piezoelectric uh, basically this is called piezoelectric charge coefficient this is called piezoelectric charge coefficient piezoelectric charge coefficient okay uh, whose uh, unit is given as coulomb per newton this is called unit is given as coulomb per newton and what does it this 3 3 mode uh, i hope you know that uh, if you just choose this convention let's say this is one direction this is direction two and this direction three so it means the polarization and the stress which is applied is in the same direction okay there can be some other mode which are also available so you may have a d31 or you may have d different okay uh, in fact uh, one five mode is also applied if you are applying a shearing stress so the stress if you are applying if it is a shearing stress then uh, this one five mode can also be obtained okay now it is possible to determine typical voltages and current which are generated under an applied stress by considering two extremes of load impedance okay uh, so suppose if i consider a let's say we are considering a let's say we are considering a open circuit condition so in case of open circuit means what open circuit condition open circuit means your load resistance is infinity load resistance is infinity so if your load impedance is infinity we can just write down the instant charge which is accumulated at the surface as q equals to c into v okay where uh, c can be written as the area into epsilon permittivity basically permittivity by thickness you know use yes in c equals to epsilon into a by t that is a common thing which you have uh, seen earlier so that is the same thing i am applying what the that, that 3 3 stands for this stands for the permittivity at constant stress t stands for constant stress and the polarization direction and the stress are applied in the same direction that is what it does it mean and uh, the if you are talking about the parallel plate capacitor so this is the distance height and uh, the area of these plates is what area is okay now since the energy stored in this in a capacitor that we know okay if we know that what is the energy stored in the capacitor and that if i just write also energy stored in the capacitor if i just write down that as e so that can be written as uh, half cv square you know half cv square so this can be written in terms of the stress as half c uh, is this much this is the value of the c so and uh, v i can just write down as uh, here capacitance this and uh, let me just write down what what could be the v v can be written as d33 by epsilon 
on the permittivity okay into h into sigma delta sigma that that is your v potential okay so uh, this you can write down as so the energy you can write down here as let me just write down it can be written as half uh, let me just put the final thing d33 square by epsilon 33 t a here another term is coming uh, as t and uh, then delta sigma square of it U equals to okay. Basically, what uh, is basically what is written is that if charge q is generated so charge will be why this area is coming i think uh, so therefore uh, mechanical this is not mechanical stress okay uh, yeah okay so maybe uh, mechanical stress so stress equals to force per unit area right force per unit area force per unit unit area is mechanical stress uh, that is what is your sigma is a change in this force mechanical area which is denoted as sigma delta sigma okay so if i multiply this quantity by the area so what i'm i'll be getting is the force right so if you are applying a force uh, you are getting this thing right so that's why this charge i think is written as q equals to you know, or which is proportional to delta sigma into a okay and uh, d3t is coming as a proportionality constant so in the material you are applying a force you are applying a force compressive force let's say so this is giving this is giving you the force per unit area so total force you are actually talking this so this is basically the total force okay this is basically the total force right so this is the unit of force okay this is the force unit of force newton yeah that's why your d33 so d33 it's unit if you remember it is coulomb per newton so yeah now i have got it you have coulomb in this part and you have newton in this part so that's why you are getting coulomb per newton right 
and otherwise if you just consider this unit of stress so stress will be newton per meter square okay yes absolutely newton per this is the so that's why uh, this stress is multiplied by the area depending on the what is the area of your sample uh, the force can be decided and that is how you will get this value of uh, the unit of the d3g okay now i hope this is clear and now my second query is how you are getting the uh, voc okay so q equals to it is written at the earlier equation that q equals to c into v and uh, q we were writing as d33 into a into delta sigma and uh, obviously c it is we know that c equals to epsilon this into a uh, by h if you have said this is the separation between these two plate if you are saying it is h then it is okay c so i can write down here as epsilon 3 3 into a by h okay so this will be v right now v therefore what will be the value of v so both side I can just consider removing A from both sides. So V can be written as D33 by OK, Epsilon 33, this and uh, h into sigma delta sigma okay so v or voc because uh, this this is nothing but the open circuit uh, condition okay this is nothing but the open circuit condition so i can just write down this quantity as voc okay fine voc i can just write down and uh, therefore the stored energy in terms of half cv square this can also be written down as like uh, now i just uh, i can write down as uh, that e can write down energy stored equals to half cv square now i have got off all those values so simply i just can write down this equals to half d33 square by epsilon 33 T, this is the final outcome which will come now I am surprised how this T thing is coming how this T is coming Okay, for the timing, let me just write down here this T thing. Uh, later on, uh, we can clarify it. So here, which I can see is A and T and this delta sigma square. That is what is coming out to be, right? 
now you can see the important factor here for let's say for uh, if you have i think this is not t this is this has to be the uh, again let me just okay let, let me just see that what this stands for i think this is not uh, t but this has to be h i think this has to be h let me just clarify i'll i'll just let me clarify it i think that has to be h as if you remember uh, what we have derived earlier as c as a into epsilon 3 3 by h and v or you can say voc which uh, we we have seen as d 3 3 by epsilon 3 3 t into h into delta sigma and yeah, this was the value voc so if i just simply put it here half cv square so half c a into epsilon 3 3 at constant stress into h into now voc square so i am going to write down d33 square and then epsilon 33 t that's square also and then i'm going to write down h square and then i'm going to write down this delta sigma square correct there is no wrong in this let me just put these things separate which we have done now here you can see uh, so uh, if i just use some different colors to strike it out so uh, one one of this will strike out and so there will be only this and 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 this h will go here it will be only h yeah so now you can see uh, this is going to be true so if this is not t this is actually h then this is going to be the energy stored in the capacitor uh, at open circuit condition so in the open circuit condition you will have the value of uh, this thing right uh, now so if you have so for a given value of for a given value of area and for a given value of thickness if this two is given so you can see the stored energy will depend on this factor d33 square by epsilon this thing so this is going to be deciding deciding factor so this you can say this is the figure of merit for the energy storage this is this could be the figure of merit for the uh, stored energy right so if you are talking about uh, energy harvesting devices under the short circuit uh, under the open circuit condition then uh, d33 then you can say d33 uh, square by epsilon 33 at constant stress that will be the deciding factor for the energy stored okay now if i consider the short circuit condition if i now consider the short circuit condition so if i consider the short circuit condition so what does it mean so short circuit means your load resistance is zero here 
so in this case if uh, it is a uh, load resistance is made zero then the current which will be generating or flowing that will be the how this charge which was generated at how this is flowing within the time that is how you can uh, measure the current and this is short circuit current okay this is short circuit current this can be written as you have earlier uh, you have earlier this q equals to if you remember it was d33 into a sorry into a into sigma delta sigma it was q so from this equation actually we can have the value of okay so if you just differentiate this equation so if i just find out delta q by delta t if you are differentiate this with respect to time so it will be d33 will be as it is into a into that will give you delta sigma by delta t okay so this is going to be the short circuit current okay this is going to be the short circuit current d33 into a into sigma so this the measurement at both the open circuit and closed circuit are commonly made in the energy harvesting application although it should be noted at these conditions there is effectively no power since at open circuit condition there is no current and at the closed circuit condition the potential difference is zero okay so uh, mathematically measurement wise uh, theory wise it is okay so whether we are talking about a open circuit condition where we measure the open circuit voltage and if you are measuring at the short circuit condition where we measure the short circuit current here you can see in this case in case of open circuit uh, and both in this case the power is zero because uh, open circuit condition there is no current in this case you can see that current is zero and in this case the potential is zero so the power which is the product of this v into i both cases this is going to be zero so you are not getting any power by if you are doing this so this is going to be zero for both cases right this going to be zero both cases so let us now uh, find out that uh, how this measurement is done then okay <clears throat> 